morning students welcome to lakshya academy youtube channel up to now we completed the first part of semiconductor devices that is uh, types of semiconductors intrinsic semiconductor and extrinsic semiconductors now we are going to start the second part of semiconductor devices in this second part and we are going to discuss a pn junction diode and how a diode can form and forward bias condition of a pn junction diode and reverse bias condition of a pn junction diode the diode characteristics how a diode can be used as rectifier what is rectifier pn junction diode as half wave rectifier and pn junction diode as full wave rectifier and the important concept gnr diode the special type okay these are the topics that we are going to cover in the second part of semiconductor devices yeah what is a pn junction diode how it can form dear students already you know that in p type semiconductor majority charge carriers are holes minority charge carriers are electrons in n type semiconductor the majority charge carriers are electrons and minority charge carriers are holes so by doping the conduction of semiconductor increases by doping we get extrinsic semiconductors extrinsic semiconductors are of two types p type semiconductor and n type semiconductor and these p type semiconductor and n type semiconductors are electrically neutral p type semiconductor is electrically neutral n type semiconductor is electrically neutral and what happens when a p type semiconductor and n type semiconductor are suitably joined with each other so while joining we have to take care of that the crystal structure remains continuous it should not break the crystal structure should not break at the junction at the boundary so when a p type semiconductor and n type semiconductor are suitably joined such that the crystal structure remains continuous at the boundary the resulting arrangement is called as pn junction diode it is also called as crystal diode it is also called as semiconductor diode so because why they got this idea means in p type semiconductor the majority charge carriers are holes and n type semiconductors the majority charge carriers are electrons so uh, scientists got the idea that what happens uh, if they suitably joined with each other so when a p type semiconductor or n type semiconductor is uh, are suitably joined with each other a pn junction diode can be formed this is also called as a semiconductor diode students observe the diagram the left part represents the p type semiconductor and the right part represents the n type semiconductor 
and in the diagram i mentioned that uh, black uh, circles those are mobile holes uh, majority charge carriers from p site and uh, in the p side uh, that uh, blue circles represent uh, immobile negative impurity ions immobile they can't move immobile negative impurity ions they are bounded to their atoms yeah coming to that n side that uh, violet circles represents uh, the mobile electrons that is a majority charge carriers uh, in n side they can move freely and the green circles represents the immobile positive impurity ions immobile they can't move they bound they bound to their lattice so when p type semiconductor and n type semiconductor are suitably joined a junction is formed that junction is called as pn junction the p region has mobile holes and immobile negative charged ions and the n region has mobile electrons and immobile positive charged ions this region is called as pn junction pn junction so this whole arrangement is electrically neutral this whole arrangement is electrically neutral because we are not applying any electric field or any electric potential <coughs> this whole arrangement is electrically neutral okay so when a p type semiconductor or n type semiconductor are suitably joined with each other a pn junction diode can be formed <coughs> what happens when these two extrinsic semiconductors uh, suitably joined <coughs> that we will discuss now observe the diagram carefully <coughs> this is the important concept yeah p type semiconductor and n type semiconductor are suitably joined and uh, this uh, this is the junction okay so in the diagram it is clear that <coughs> there is a diffuse of uh, electrons from n side to p side they cross the pn junction and similarly there is a diffuse of uh, positive charge carriers from p side to n side they cross the they diffuse uh, through the junction so when electrons move from n region to p region and just after the junction they combine with the holes and they neutralize each other like that the positive charge carriers move from p side to n side just after that junction to the n side the holes uh, combine with uh, negative charge carriers uh, and uh, they neutralize <coughs> so on the p side on the p side uh, there is uh, charge carriers uh, negative charge carriers developed in some particular region on the n side in some particular region a positive charge carriers uh, developed so in this region negative charges and positive charges this positive charges avoid the motion of the positive charges from p side to the n side similarly and these negative charges onto the p side of the junction 
avoid the free mobility of uh, whole, uh, electrons from n region to p region this region is called as uh, depletion region so after pn junction diode formed holes from p region diffuse into n region due to difference in concentration and similarly electrons from n region diffuse into p region due to uh, the difference in concentration and holes and free electrons combine near the junction and each combination eliminates an electron and a hole the uncompensated negative immobile ions in the p region do not allow any more free electrons from n region like that the uncompensated positive immobile ions in the n region do not allow any more holes to diffuse from p side to n side so this region is called as depletion region the region containing uncompensated acceptor and donor ions is called as depletion region because this region devoid of mobile charges it does not allow freely the mobile charges whether it is positive or not negative charges from n to p or positive charges from p to n and this region only has immobile charges so this region is also called as space charge region generally the n region has high potential than that of p region so an electric field is set up across this region and this potential difference developed across the depletion region is called as potential barrier generally for silicon diode the potential diode is about 0.7 volt for germanium diode the potential barrier is about 0.3 volt the physical distance between the one side and the other side of the barrier is called as width of the barrier or width of the depletion region width of the depletion region generally the width of the depletion region is about 10 power minus 6 meters students note down that the width of the depletion region is about 10 power minus 6 meter generally the potential barrier opposes the motion of the majority charge carriers okay so a few majority charge carriers which has the more high kinetic energy can move from one side to another side from p to n or n to p majority charge carriers which has more kinetic energy can move yeah potential barrier helps the movement of minority charge carriers next uh, so by suitable suitably join a p type semiconductor and n type semiconductor a pn junction diode can be formed so across the junction an electric field is an electric potential is developed that potential is called as barrier potential so when a pn junction diode is not connected to any external electrical sources that condition is called as unbiased condition of a pn junction diode later i show the symbol of pn junction diode so 
what happens when a pn junction diode is connected to an external source external electrical source yeah consider a pn junction diode and that pn junction diode is connected to a battery of emf e yeah such that the p type semiconductor is connected to positive terminal of the battery and n type semiconductor is connected to negative terminal of the battery and when the pn junction diode is connected like this that means when a pn junction diode is connected to positive terminal of the battery and n type semiconductor is connected to negative terminal of the battery then we can say that uh, the diode is in forward bias condition how how why we say the diode is in forward bias condition that i explain now yeah when a p type when a pn junction diode is connected to an external source a battery in this way so this positive terminal repels uh, the positive charges in the p region and the negative terminal repels uh, negative charge carriers in the n region so they enter into the depletion region to some part of the depletion region to the p side these holes combine with electrons negative charge carriers and they nullify they neutralize like that coming to that n side negative terminal of the battery repels negative charge carriers present in the n region they move into that depletion region and in some part of the region they combine with holes present in that depletion region and they neutralize so if they neutralize with each other the width of the the width of the depletion region decreases and an electric field is developed and ih represents the current due to holes and ie represents the current due to electrons that i mention in the diagram and this is the circuit diagram complete circuit diagram when a pn junction diode connected in forward bias condition when the positive terminal of the battery connected to p region and a negative terminal of the battery connected to n region then the pn junction diode is said to be forward biased condition so already we discussed that uh, holes in the p region repels, repelled by the positive terminal of the battery and uh, electrons in the n region are repelled by the negative terminal of the battery and some holes and free electrons enter into the depletion region and the potential barrier and the width of the depletion region decreases so by connecting a pn junction diode in forward bias condition the potential barrier decreases and the width of the depletion region decreases hence conduction increases so for an ideal diode when i ideal diode is connected in forward bias condition it offers zero resistance ideal diode ideal diode means in forward bias condition it offers a zero resistance okay this is the circuit diagram of a pn junction diode connected in forward bias condition and what happens when it is connected to an external source next what happens when the p region of a diode connected to negative terminal of the battery and n region is connected to positive terminal of the battery
Yeah, in the perisian near the positive terminal of the battery, an electron breaks covalent bond in the crystal and thus a hole is created. The hole drifts towards the junction and the electron enters the positive terminal of the battery. So, a large number of majority charge carriers diffuse through the junction and a large current flows. So, uh, conduction increases, resistance decreases. So, when a PN junction diode is connected in forward bias condition, its resistance decreases. Next, what happens when a PN junction diode is connected to an external source in such a way that the P region is connected to negative terminal of the battery and N region is connected to positive terminal of the battery. The negative terminal of the battery attracts some of the positive charge carriers in the P region. Like that, the positive terminal of the battery attracts some of the negatively charged carriers in N region. <clears throat> so obviously, the positive charge carriers in P region attracted by the negative terminal of the battery and negative charge carriers attracted by the positive terminal of the battery. So, uh, width of the depletion layer increases. In this case, width of the depletion layer increases and this is the current flow when a PN junction diode connected in reverse bias condition. IH represents the whole current and IE represents the electron current from N side to P side. The holes in the P region are attracted by the negative terminal of the battery in this connection and the free electrons are attracted by the positive terminal of the battery. Majority carriers are pulled away from the junction, so the potential barrier further increases, width of the depletion layer increases, therefore it becomes more difficult for majority carriers diffuse across the junction. So in this case, it is very very difficult to, dif to diffuse the majority charge carriers to diffuse across the junction from one side to another side. So obviously current decreases, conduction decreases, width of the depletion layer increases. At a given temperature, the rate of generation of the minority carriers is constant. So, uh, in this case, the current is called as reverse saturation current. The number of minority ca carriers is small. Therefore, the current due to that minority carriers is very small, it, which is in the order of 10 power minus 9 ampere. In the case of silicon diode, 10 power minus 6 ampere in the case of germanium diode. So the reverse biased PN junction diode has an effective capacitance called depletion capacitance. And P and N regions act as plates of a capacitor. That the concept of capacitor you learn in uh, electrostatics chapter and uh, this depletion region acts as uh, a dielectric medium this is important concept yeah pn junction diode characteristics uh, when it is in forward bias condition and uh, reverse bias condition Okay, first we discuss the forward bias condition. Students, this is the symbol of PN junction diode. 
actually this is the symbol of pn junction diode okay so when a pn junction diode is connected to forward bias condition a uh, pn junction diode is connected to a variable source variable source means uh, we can vary the voltage input voltage okay the current passing through the diode can be measured by the milli ammeter yeah in the circuit the ammeter the positive terminal of the ammeter connected to n type semiconductor and in this diagram this represents n type and this represents p type this is n type this is p type okay and a potential difference across the diode can be measured by using a voltmeter this is the voltmeter so for different voltage voltages we are going to calculate the current passing through the diode and the readings are tabulated and a graph is drawn between current and voltage Yeah, while plotting the graph uh, the independent quantities are taken along horizontal axis dependent quantities are taken along uh, y axis vertical axis so among these voltage and current which one is independent quantity and which one is dependent quantity yeah obviously potential is independent and vf represents forward when the diode is in forward bias condition the potential and if represents the current in the diode yeah uh, the values are tabulated for different v values we calculate we measure the different i values and values are tabulated and a graph is plot between v and i and from the graph it is very clear that when v equal to 0 i equal to 0 v equal to 0 i equal to 0 this represents i equal to 0 and first with the increase of potential current slows increases slowly increases and from this region and it is very clear that graph is linear graph linear means with the potential current increases linearly and this from this region the current increases linearly with the potential so that potential is called as knee voltage represented by vk so consider a pn junction diode and connected in reverse bias reverse bias means n type semiconductor this is n type n type is connected n type is connected to negative terminal of the battery sorry positive terminal of the battery so this is the reverse bias condition of uh, a diode so for different v values we are going to calculate different uh, i values and vr represents uh, the voltage when the diode is in reverse bias and ir represents the corresponding current values and the graph looks like this values are tabulated and the graph is drawn 
and uh, from the graph it is very clear that uh, and with the pot potential current increases very very slowly at a particular temperature current increases uh, abruptly abruptly means uh, very high values and uh, that potential where the current uh, increases abruptly that potential is called as breakdown voltage breakdown voltage the resistance of a diode the static dc resistance of a diode is nothing but according to ohm's law v by i and the dynamic or ac resistance of a diode is delta v by delta i dc resistance static resistance of a diode r equal to v by i dynamic resistance of a diode delta v by delta i yeah next uh, pn junction diode can be used as uh, a rectifier what is uh, rectification what is meant by a rectifier consider a pn junction diode diode d a load resistance is connected in series with the diode so across the diode sorry across the load resistance we can get the output and this is input yeah this is the positive pulse observe the diagram carefully positive pulse so positive pulse means <coughs> positive terminal connected to p type p region of the diode so obviously diode diode is in forward bias condition it offers a very low resistance so current passing through the diode and we get the output and in the second situation we consider the negative pulse <coughs> that means negative terminal connected to p region of the diode so the diode is in reverse bias condition if it in reverse bias condition it offers very high resistance so no output will be observed so next step uh, uh, by considering the total pulse uh, in a stretch yeah consider the total pulse so for the positive pulse the diode is in forward bias condition the uh, reverse pulse uh, the negative pulse the diode is in reverse bias condition so in this case from using the diode using the single diode we get half of the wave only rectified and half of the only we get as output the process of converting alternating current into direct current is called as rectification and the instrument that can be used for the rectification process is called as rectifier so using a single diode we can get half of the pulse only so this is called as half wave rectifier the device used for rectification process is called as a rectifier the pn junction diode offers very low resistance in forward bias condition and very high resistance in reverse bias condition so because of that if we sent a ac input this is transformer this is the symbol of transformer that you discuss in the electricity part so if the input is ac source ac pulse we get the diode 
using single diode we can get only half pulse so this is called as half wave rectifier and the efficiency of the half wave rectifier that I discuss later Yeah, PN junction diode as full wave rectifier. For this purpose, uh, we consider two diodes. Uh, here in the diagram, I consider two diodes uh, D1 and D2. They are connected to the variable source. Uh, that means uh, AC source. And this is the load resistance. Uh, load resistance is connected across A and B when the positive pulse is allowed the diode D1 is in forward bias condition and in that case the diode D2 is in reverse bias condition so in the diagram it is very clear that uh, this is the closed circuit And this is the closed circuit next when negative pulse is considered yeah when negative pulse is considered the diode d1 is in reverse bias condition and diode D2 is in forward bias condition and across this closed circuit we can get the output so by combining these two pulse the complete pulse so in the diagram the yellow part is the output because of d1 diodes and the green part is uh, green part is the output because of uh, diode d2 this is uh, because of diode d2 and uh, this is because of uh, diode d1 okay so when the diode rectifies whole of the AC wave it is called as full wave rectifier and during the positive half cycle the diode D1 is in forward bias condition and it conducts and the current is through BA and during the negative half cycle the diode D2 conducts and the current is through, through BA so uh, this in this way using two diodes uh, we can rectify the total ac pulse so pn junction diode can be used as a half wave rectifier and pn junction diode can be used as a full wave rectifier the special purpose of pn junction diode this is the GNR diode yeah from the diagram uh, it is very clear that a PN junction diode has a special property in reverse bias condition at the breakdown region and this is the GNR diode symbol and the GNR diode can be obtained it is it should be heavily doped and depletion region is less than that of 10 power minus 6 meters electric field is high especially especially designed diode in reverse bias condition is called as zener diode okay vz represents the breakdown region and uh, uh, input is unregulated voltage maybe voltage may varies so using GNR diode we get the regulated voltage and this concept is very important for uh, 
problems for NEET are JEE. So, uh, I explained uh, the theory part of a half wave rectifier, full wave rectifier and GNR diode. In next lesson, the efficiency of a half wave rectifier, the efficiency of a full wave rectifier and uh, the conduction process in GNR diode. These three concepts are very important for numericals and uh, for the entrance examinations. In the next part, uh, I will discuss these efficiency of uh, half wave and full wave rectifiers and the uh, GNR diode. Just uh, I have given the theory concept of half wave rectifier and uh, full wave rectifier only. Okay, students. Uh, be safe stay at home take care of your health okay next part uh, i explain the efficiency of a rectifier and a gnr diode concept so by that by that uh, concept uh, we complete uh, the second part of semiconductor devices okay thank you Thank you.